I'm Debbie. And I'm Allison. And we're the Polter Gals. Hello, and welcome back to the Polter Gals. My name's Debbie. And I'm Allison. And this week, we're... Wait. <laughs> we gotta say who we are. Hold on. Hi, I'm Debbie. <laughs> and I'm Allison. And we're the, the Polter Gals. Were you just telling me last episode Listen. <laughs> about the intro? <laughs> I know. I was messed up last time, so it's my turn to mess up this time. Uh, so uh, this week, we're going to be talking about the Queen Anne Hotel in San Francisco, California. Ooh. This one <laughs> is going to be a good one. It's going to be a good I one. So. We're getting back to our, our hotelier. Yeah. Um, but yeah. For whatever reason, y'all tend to like these a little bit. I know. I feel like the hotel episodes are like our best episodes. They are. Mm -hmm. I, maybe they ju it's just a hotel that they can go visit. That's true. Of just a few hours. That's true. So, this one, this hotel is a historic 1890 Victorian mansion. Ooh, I love us a Victorian mansion. And the namesake, Queen Anne. Queen, Queen Anne's architectural style. Wow, that was the word of the week like two weeks ago, and you got it correct this time. I try. Wow, I'm so proud of you. I try, okay. Wow. <laughs> I try my hardest. So it was uh, that architectural style and decorated in the paint lady style, painted lady style. Yes. It was originally a girls' boarding school, mm. and it narrowly survived the 1906 San Francisco yes. earthquake. That was one of like the most like well-known earthquakes in all of California. Was, yeah. So, uh, yay. Yay there. Yay them. Uh, the head mistress of the school, Miss Mary Lake, allegedly had an affair with James Slippery Jim <laughs> Farm. James Slippery Jim. <laughs> yeah. Great. I don't. Er, so, the, he was a senator. Mm -hmm. And he funded the building of this mansion. Oh, interesting. So it, it, we're going to kind of take a deep dive into both of them. Okay. As, and figure out how this happened and why it happened. Ooh. So, More to come soon. Yes. So Mary ended up denying all rumors, but it didn't seem to help her in any way. Dang. So she still was blamed for having an affair. Yeah. Uh, so Mary was born in New York, and as a kid, she and her parents moved to San Francisco. Yeah. Her dad was a very well-known lawyer, providing mm -hmm. her with many opportunities and giving her a very uh, well education. So mm -hmm. she was really, really well educated, allowing her to become a teacher when she grew up. Aww. She uh, taught grammar. For some time, but then she wanted to start her own school. She needs to teach us grammar. That way. <laughs> but uh, we'll have to go visit her. Ooh. Please go. Please teach us some grammar. Go fund me. Go fund me. Go at fund the me. Patreon. Grammar. Patreon. <laughs> go fund me. Grammar. Patreon. Go, go fund our grammar. <laughs> <laughs> so we can get educated. There we go. We need more education. <laughs> so she started her own boarding school for girls. Mm hmm. The school was intended for those who had money, and it grew so much in one year that she had to move and making a 31-room building for girls to stay in. Wow. And this is where James comes in. Ooh. So, the tea. Yeah. Slippy so, boy. <laughs> I will say there's not much known mm -hmm. about Mary. Okay. Outside of this story. Okay. Like, they just know that she's from New York, moved, possibly had an affair, and mm. that's it. Interesting. So, uh, James, I found a little bit more about her, but outside of when I looked him up. Mm -hmm. So, James gave Mary the money that she needed to build this new school. Mm -hmm. uh, because for whatever reason, despite daddy's money, mm -hmm. she couldn't do the same. She couldn't make herself this name. Yeah. So, she, she was given that money. 
and that's where the rumors began. Mm -hmm. It is also thought that James is one of the biggest quote-unquote villains on the West Coast. Oh, no. Yeah. So, he originally, he is an immigrant, and he Mm -hmm. originally went to the West Coast to strike gold with the mining industry, and he did. During the gold rush. Yes. California gold rush. Yes. Did you know that's how we got blue jeans now to this day? It's due to the California gold rush. Thank God. And now blue jeans are our life. They are. Yeah. I love jeans. Oh, oh, you know what? We talked about jeans. We talked about babies being born in jeans. Now we're talking about jeans. <laughs> we're talking there about we go. Blue. Look at us go. It all comes around. The history of jeans. <laughs> jeans were made in the California gold rush for babies to be born in them. <laughs> oh, no. That sounds horrible. <laughs> Ugh. It's fine. Yuck. So by the 1880s, his net worth was close to 50 million. Ooh. Yeah. So back in the day, 50 million dollars. Oh yeah. He'd be Jeffrey Bezos. He, yikes, was I guess the equivalent of a billion billionaire now. Oof. Yeah, probably. I mean, if you think about how far money went back mm-hmm. then, so uh, he made superintendent in the mining industry, mm. and at one point he was seen smoking inside the mines. Which was prohibited. <gasps> which, and his, his, the workers that worked under him mm-hmm. thought it was okay to smoke. Oh, no. Since they saw him do it. Oh, no. But later that day, every employee that was caught smoking <gasps> or that he saw smoking got fired. Wow. Yeah. What a... So, yeah, it was kind of like one of those... Do as I say, not as I yeah, do. Yeah, it was like a douchebag move i know he like purposely went down there did it saw everybody mm. that smoke and then he was like bye maybe he has like a test i, don't, I mean or maybe it was still, just double standard <laughs> i would say maybe double standard Dang. since he was so far up that's true and he made so much money it doesn't even matter if he lost yeah. his job yeah i don't think he cared so this since he was a senator, he ended up, he had to go to Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. for a lot of his meetings. And this is where, kind of where the scandal starts to begin. Ooh. And his wife, James' wife, ended up divorcing him. What? Because he was a well-known cheater. Oh. So she knew that he was cheating. Just not necessarily with Mary, just knew yeah. he was cheating. Got it. Yeah. So... She divorced him, and it is also known that he did this as well, uh, cheated as well as abused her and their Aww. kids. So they had three kids. Villain. Yeah. So this is why he's like one of the most well known villains of the West Coast because everyone knew he Bad cheated. Guy. Yeah. Everyone knew he cheated. His wife knew that rich he, men I never know, trust a man with money. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. That We're getting was... haunted in the studio. <laughs> Yikes. And then, you know, don't, don't, if you see a yellow ghost, it's like yellow snow. <laughs> don't eat it. Don't eat it. <laughs> don't let it go in your body. No, it's not good. That's how you get pee pee possessed. <laughs> Poulter pal possessed. Poulter pal possessed. See, pee pee possessed. Pee pee possessed. The triple P. Yeah. Don't let the triple P happen. No triple P and up in this. (laughs) It's like a Guy Fieri. He's like, hi, I'm here. Hi, welcome to Triple D. I'm here to get the best diners, drive-ins, and dives. It's like, hi, welcome to Triple P. My name's Debbie, and I'm here to get into the Polter Pals possessions. (laughs) No. (sighs) Can someone please Photoshop like me with like Guy Fieri? (laughs) I'm going to put, hi, welcome to Triple P. (laughs) I'm going to get that ghost that's up there and put your face I'll on it. take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, after the scandal, at some point he was charged for criminal sex. Criminal sex? So, in other words, rape. Oh. He was charged with rape. That's so sad. But at the time, it was called criminal sex. Yeah. That, uh, I mean, you know, it makes I mean, sense. Yeah. I, I don't know about back in the day, but you know. Crazy. So... James's wife divorced him. Yeah. As she should. Yeah. You go, girl. Yeah. And so get this. This is where it's like that damn girl. So she won the case. Mm-hmm. 
got custody of all three kids. Dang. Full custody. Wow. Won $4.25 million. Get that bag. <laughs> along with two of the properties that they had together. Dang. Yes, you go. Which yes, this, queen. Yeah. So queen you, Anne. Yes, you queen. Can imagine <laughs> two properties. Mm-hmm. And these were like mansion properties. Dang. Four point two million on top of that. Yeah, but I mean like so, she had to go through so much bad stuff. Like yeah. is it So she was like it? making bank. Mm-hmm. But at this time, this was very much unheard of. Mm-hmm. A lot of the time the woman would end up left with nothing. Oh. So she was very, very She was a, a female icon. Yeah. Feminist icon. Yeah. So it was like, thank God for her. Yeah. But unfortunately, bad for her. There was no historical proof of the affair. Oh. But many seem to think that it may have been hidden since James was a senator. So he and he had, was probably paying people off yeah, with so money. He had the ability to hide it if he wanted it nice. to. Nice. So it's kind of one of those we don't really know because mm-hmm. there is no proof of it. Yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, and since Mary's death, the Queen Anne Hotel has had many owners from brothel owners oh. to church caretakers. <laughs> what a to, turnaround from a brothel yeah. to a church. Yeah. <laughs> and then to mysterious secret societies. Ooh, I love a good secret society. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that. And again, mm. outside of that, of the whole scandal, not much else is known about Mary. Dang. So there's that. Wow. So it sounds like we got wrapped up in the lives of James and Mary. Yeah. And now this building was left to be haunted. <laughs> so at some point, somebody obviously took it, bought it, mm-hmm. made it into a historical hotel, and nice. that's what it is now. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. So go them. Yeah. But very sad for Mary. Yeah. For Mary. And James's wife. Poor James' wife. <laughs> she was just trying to do good. She was doing the best she could. <laughs> so anyway. Sad. Yeah. So, so that's all the history. Yep. And it's time for us to take a commercial break. Break. And now, a word from our sponsors. Spooky. Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one star review to better understand how it happened, when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story. Zach and I'm Mike and we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about bros foes and heroes it's the two of us looking into the world of comics breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of and some that are just absolutely ridiculous yeah so Zach comes up with a character each time and uh, I go into it just completely blind I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything and, and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe especially golden age stuff. Oh, golden yeah. age stuff is always the best and we will make sure to 
highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything. Yeah, that's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bows Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. <laughs> bros and bros and heroes gonna tell you about bros and bros and heroes. Gonna tell you about. Hey y'all, I'm April. Hi, I'm Caroline. And we have a new podcast for you. What's it called, Caroline? Uh, Bloody Happy Hour. It's going to be your new favorite guilty pleasure. We're going to talk about some bloody stuff. Serial killers. True crime. Rape. <laughs> Rapists. Why not join us? We'll have a good time. You literally never know. I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> Bloody Happy Hour. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Alrighty then, we are back um, from the history, and now it's time that we jump into the hauntings. Um, so this building has been obviously a multiple, multiple plethora of random different things. Yes. Um, so there are quite a few hauntings. Um, so not all are bad. I, I feel like a lot of times we just get like stuck in like a bunch of like negative, like ghosts are evil yeah. and like it's so sad. Um, but in this edition, it's not that bad. Um, Yay. so actually let's start off with the friendliest ghost. Um, and then from there we'll go down. <laughs> Um, so the friendliest ghost, Casper, obviously, um, this ghost is actually reportedly incredibly friendly and often takes care of hotel guests as best as it can. Um, this ghost is usually actually seen unpacking suitcases. Oh. Um, he actually tucks the guests in to make them nice and comfy. Um, and then it's also heard singing to them when they fall asleep, um, which is absolutely precious. Um, and then some people think that it's actually it could be that the hotel is haunted um, because it's by uh, haunted by Mary Lake, of course. Um, and she's taking care of the guests just as she did once take care of the boarding school girls. Um, so maybe her heart really was in the right place. Um, and then despite being buried 3000 miles away, um, they still think her spirit still roams the halls. Um, so even though her body is far away. Her mind and spirit is still in those, in the hotel, taking care of people. Um, and it's said that the spirit often sings and is found throughout the hotel singing. Um, so maybe singing a little lullaby, maybe singing some tunes, whistle Aww. while you work, you know. Um, and, you know, maybe that is Mary Lake here to this day. Uh, and then um, one of the most... One of the hauntings, um, and you know how like we usually when we do hotels, we do by room. Um, so this was actually in room 410, so 410. Um, yeah. And this is actually Mary's old office. How nice. How nice. Um, and so, of course, she's one of the spirits that was said to haunt this room. Um, the reason why is at one point, a guest actually woke up on the floor with the blankets tucked in underneath them. And so they're pretty sure that she just like tucked him in and they were like, oh, I'm sleeping on the floor. Let me just take care Aww. of you. Um, and then it's said that Mary actually tucks in guests quite often. Um, so this is a rather normal occurrence to actually happen. So like when you're there, just expect to be tucked in. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, very cute. Um, there, this actually happens so much that people actually request just to stay in room 410. <laughs> I don't um, know why, but because okay. they want to experience, they want the, they want ghost mommy to tuck them in. <gasps> ghost mommy, ghost mommy, she's a real ghost mommy. Wow, how nice. You know how I feel about old lady ghosts are super nice. You know, I just, I'm just like ghost mommy, tuck me in. You know, like I'm fine with that. Like you know, <laughs> Roll back that's a to vibe. The episode one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if yeah, you don't understand that reference. Please go listen. Go to back Stan and listen to it. Stanley Hotel episode one. Shout out. Shout out to us. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, and there's some speculation that the friendly ghost um, and the ghost of Mary are one in the same, but could possibly be two different entities. Um, it is also said that if this is true, then Mary never truly left. Um, and she never left out caring for others and wanting to just and wanting to teach, um, despite uh, being accused of having an affair and despite all the negative connotations. Yeah. Maybe she really was good at heart and just wanted the best. Oh, sweet. Um, and then, um, so that was a little bit about Mary's ghost. So I started with the friendliest. Um, and now we're going to move on to secret societies. Um, so the ghosts of secret societies. So guests often report feeling cold spots in the hallway and actually seeing strange reflections in the mirrors all around the hotel. Um, so not only is there a friendly ghost, there may be, um, maybe other ghosts. Um, so, the, so the rumor actually has it that the hotel once housed the meetings of a secret society that had something to do with astrology. I'm a oh. Pisces. <laughs> what are you? I'm a Leo. I'm, oh, she's a Leo. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so actually a secret society dealing with astrology. Um, so maybe they could have dabbled in some of the paranormal. So, so maybe they may have um, awoken something. Oh. Brought something into the space, know. if you will. And for a minute, little education part here, mm -hmm. astrology is the belief system mm -hmm. of astronomy. Mm. Astronomy is just strictly the science mm -hmm. of outer space. Ooh, wow. So astrology is the belief system. Ooh, can we make this the word of the week? You didn't <gasps> even say it wrong, but I feel like now we get a little bit more yes. history. Nice. Yeah, so little education there. Wow. It's the difference between astronomy and astrology. Wow, there we go. But yeah, so um, that seems to be the spooky secret society oh. um, that was in the Queen Anne Hotel. Um, and then the other thing is there's actually a spooky neighbor. <laughs> so Mary Ellen Pleasant um, was the so-called voodoo queen of San Francisco. Um, she actually lived right across the street from the oh, Queen Anne. Oh, great. <laughs> of course she did. Great. Um, back in like the 1800s. Um, so like at the peak of like voodooism against spirituality, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, and so there have actually been sightings of apparitions and cold chills throughout the hotel. Again, not sure exactly what could be attributed to, but possibly. Um, and then there's also been actually EVPs. Can you tell us what an EVP is? It's an electric voice phenomenon. There we go. Um, and even seen little girls singing in the hotel. So, Aww. yeah. Um, so Sally. Sad. Sally. Little Sally. Little Sally. Little Sally. Little Sally. Singing in the hotel. Um, and then there's actually, like, a bunch of videos on, um, like, YouTube or amateur clips of yes. people, like, catching stuff. Maybe yeah. we can put in a clip Ooh. in our YouTube video. Ooh. Or maybe I could find one and put it on our Instagram. Um, but yeah, so if you actually look up the Queen Anne Hotel hauntings, you can actually find a bunch of videos, some amateur clips, um, and EVPs that you can actually look up. Um, and there might be a chance of running into one of the girls, little Sally, um, that once was at the boarding school. Yeah. So it kind of gives you options. You can be yeah. tucked in by Mrs. Mary, Mary Lake. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you'll be able to see little Sally. Um, maybe you'll get into some voodoo. Um, mm -hmm. Or maybe you might um, summon some astrological, who knows. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and then there's also um, a, a chance to possibly see James. Um, again, allegations. Um, and then the high chance of running into Mary. As long as you stay in room 410. Stay in room 410. That's yes. what we're here to tell you today. Um, but yeah, and that's all the hauntings for this one. Um, I, I know that we usually try and be like, oh, negative energy draws negative energy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, not everything is so bad, people. No. Um, I thought we needed a lighthearted episode. Yeah. I feel like the last couple ones we've done have been like really like rough, like <laughs> all the trigger warnings. So this yeah. one I was like, let's just tell a little drama. Let's spill a little yeah, tea. Let's let's talk a little friendly spooky ghost. Yeah. I mean, this one was definitely interesting. You know, I guess it's kind of modern day problems mm -hmm. that 
still happen to be modern day. Yeah. But, and then I, I know that with some of these, like, EVPs and stuff that I read, some of them seem to, like, they believe are faked. Oh. Which, I'll let you all decide. Because well, I did watch some of them. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's kind of hard to debunk it if you're not yeah. there. Yeah, that's true. And that's why you guys have to go for yourselves. Um, We're here to tell you the history and tell you about the hauntings. And then it's up for y'all to decide. Um, And then maybe um, as we continue to grow, we might ourselves get to go. Um, But for now, we'd love for you to leave it in the comments. Yep. Comment down below. um, Give us a like, a subscribe, and a follow. Um, Also, don't forget to rate us. Give us a rating so we can get our Spotify up. Yeah. Um, Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, um, Google, whatever you're listening to us on, please. And thank you. Oh, yeah. All right. And that's all for this episode. See you next time. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Polter Gals, a Rogue Media Network podcast. This has been a Rogue Media podcast.